You are listening to the Gritty Podcast, where we talk about all things gritty. Welcome to the Gritty Podcast. I am Brian Call, and I am joined by Brad Hunt. Today's podcast is with Austin Burnscatter, good friend of ours who owns Graxaw. Graxaw makes the game bags we use. Yep. They make the boot dryers that we use. Make some skull hangers that are pretty freaking nifty. Yes. Maybe you haven't checked out. He was at the Western Hunt Expo, so we caught up with him, sat down, and did a podcast with him. And it was great, as usual. Austin's a very, like, he's an engineer. Yes. Uh, and he just nerds out on coming up with cool solutions to problems. And fulfilling our, like, lightweight backcountry needs. He's yeah. He's done a good job. Uh, years that. ago, you know, we, I, I got the game bags mm-hmm. from uh, Lampers, who got them from Austin. Yep. And we used them on a bear hunt. First time I ever had them. They were size of a pop can, you know, in your bag. They weighed less, about the same as an empty pop can. Yeah, pretty much. And they held the bear, the whole bear. It was like, man, the last thing I want to carry is a lot of game bags, bulky, heavy, yep. you know, you don't always succeed. And here you are carrying this thing just in case. Two pound game bags, three but, pound game bags. But when you do, you need them desperately. So mm-hmm. these bags were genius. And then later I was talking about my sweaty feet, how you get wet in the back country and then you're stuck, especially if you're using an insulated full grain leather boot and it's late season. Even if you don't submerge your foot in the water, those boots will fill up with sweat day after day after day. There's nowhere for that to go for a guy like me. Combine my adrenaline sweat along with my hiking sweat. <laughs> Within three or four days, my boots are so wet that mm. they just feel like they actually were in water. There's nowhere for my yeah. sweat to go right. in, in, under those conditions in a boot like that. And uh, that's where Graxaw comes in because Austin heard that podcast and, and he's like, bro, I got you. Yep. And he shipped me this prototype. Uh, I tried it in a hot tent, fixed all my problems. It's The rest is history, although I seem to need to keep talking about it because when we were in Alaska, nobody had them. Absolutely. We ran into so many dudes out there that were there because they liked a lot of what we produce with our moose hunts in Alaska. Yeah. They follow the show, but somehow or another, they didn't follow the boot dryer. Yeah, and through the podcast, like people have found out that I'm opposite of Brian. My feet don't sweat, but they're like, so I don't need the boot dryers. But then I'm like, all right, do you hunt late season? And they're like, mm-hmm. oh, yeah. So when I use boot dryers, it's basically one to dry out the boots, but it's to put my foot foot in a warm boot yep. when I get up in the morning. That's just it. Your leather or your synthetic leather, whatever you're using, it still soaks up water at, yeah. at some point or can. And then that boot will freeze overnight. Mm-hmm. And it's it's terrible to try to put your foot into a frozen, even if it's all exterior frozen, yeah. it's still miserable. To put your boot in a nice supple boot, your foot in a nice supple boot in the morning on a ten degree day is you're starting off winning. <laughs> that's right. There's a lot more to talk about, and we covered in the podcast yep. uh, what we just said. We we actually discuss in the podcast, so it's a little redundant. But trust me, um, it's information you'll want to get. Support Austin if you can, and if you're in need of these products, because it also supports us. Mm-hmm. You won't regret any of the things he builds. They're all, it's all excellent stuff. And uh, I, think, I think you're going to enjoy this show. If you are in the need of hunting gear and you are shopping at Go Hunt, use the code GRITTY over there. You will save, I think, 10% yeah. on almost all purchases. Mm-hmm. So use the code GRITTY over at Go Hunt for those purchases that you're not buying direct and so on. And you get points back for future purchases through the Go Hunt gear shop as well yeah. as, you, as you purchase. And then uh, we have a, a bear tour. Yep. We're going to tour. Uh, we're going to two cities. We're going to Boise yep. and to Missoula, Montana. Correct. Boise, Idaho, Missoula, Montana. It's in March. Coming up here real soon. It's a it's a multi day event. Myself, Mark Livesey, with Treeline Academy, and uh, Ryan Lampers, Stealthy Hunter, yep. and Brad Hunt, and I will all four be there. We're going to be uh, presenting information on how to bear hunt, and we're going to provide some. Uh, some eats and some good times. Yes. So don't miss it. If you want to, if you want to go, you want to find out if it's for you, check out Western bear tour.com. That is Western bear tour.com. Go over there, sign up. Hopefully we'll see you there. Thank you for tuning in. Enjoy this show and stay gritty. So uh, folks, we're at the Western hunt expo with our good friend, Austin born sketter. He's close. He gets closer every time. He's still butchering. He does it on purpose. Are we, are we recording? Yeah, we are. Okay. Yeah. 
You mean you we, recorded we, all that? We got the whole story. Oh, that's great. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I should know uh, better. I should know better. So, uh, burn sketter. Yeah. That's what it is. I didn't get it wrong on purpose. I'm old. Well, you probably should keep <laughs> taking the ignite, dude. You're getting pretty slow. It's getting noticeable. <laughs> the black tea isn't enough. Hey, 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 settle down. Settle down. We are here at the Graxaw booth. Yeah. It's uh it's not very spacious, but it's here. Dude, this is a sweet location. Oh, it's you a great are location. In, like, you I'm, are... I'm in I'm by Superstar Alley over there. <laughs> I mean you can't beat Swaro and Peaks and Yeah. And all Sheep Feet all in, yeah. Mountain Ops down the yeah, way. It's a, it's a great spot. Last year, I was gar holed down by the doors. So that totally. was, I'm that like, was uh, an experience. With, how with did no you, with no product. Yeah, I was like, hey, you can order stuff online, but we got nothing to sell. People how? are like, what are these? They just pick up the boot drives and like, so you're selling these things? I'm like, well, I don't have any. <laughs> but you, but yes, I am. Yes, yes. Oh, dude. I, I We've love, come a long way in a year. You have. Sort of. You have. No, you really have. In the last... So, for folks who don't know about Graxaw, Austin started this with meat bags. Yep. And you, you, uh, sort of the story, um, you had been using pillowcases like, uh, a rookie and <laughs> a um, Midwestern a boy. Midwestern boy. He's my hometown boy. <laughs> if m- that's. Missouri. Let's uh, just get it straight, right? Two Maybe Missourians well, are on the well, podcast. If, if the if the quote influencers would have educated us better, <laughs> then we would have known to have game bags. But they did a poor job of it. So in 2016, this is a, you guys are just used to dragging your deer to your side by side and then taking it like, our game the, carts. The idea, <laughs> yeah, the idea of breaking a deer down in the mountains was a little. Yeah, so you went out, experienced uh, the 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 uh, flawed design of a pillowcase. Yeah. As Especially when it gets wet. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So, Three pounds of cotton. So then you came home and you came up with something on your own. Yeah. Rather than shop around and buy something mm-hmm. that someone had already invented, because that's the Austin way, <laughs> and uh, came out with this and tested it. And you're like, dude, I'm on to something. Yeah. And yeah. then from there, uh, you you innovated and then you got, somehow you got it into Lamper's hands. Yeah, yeah, we talked about that a little bit. But yeah, I uh, I messaged Lampers when he was, you know, he was popular, but not not what he is now. Not sixty people in line <laughs> waiting to see uh, Mountain Jesus over there. Right. But you know, ever yeah, I've never seen so many grown men in line to meet somebody. It's yeah. tra- he is amazing though. But no, so yeah. he uh, I messaged him and said, "Hey Ryan, I got these game bags. They're super light. I knew he liked everything light. Yep. And he gave me his address. I sent him some, and it just so happened like two weeks later, you guys went hunting. Yep. So that's kind of how that. And that was kind of for me. Uh, we had been friends for a long time, but we hadn't hunted together. And uh, he called me up uh, three or four times, and he was like, "Yeah, we were going on this mountain bear hunt." Him and Jeff Lusk, his buddy Jeff, and he's like, "We have this camera." In. He'd been telling about telling me about it for a while. And I've been t- encouraging him to film his hunts. You know, I'd love to. I, you know, I knew he had it, and uh, he's like. He's talking to me on the phone. He says, yeah, you know, our cameraman, he, he, he bailed out. Um, we really need someone who can keep up with us, knows how to use a camera, can edit, you know, and make a film, but, you know, to come with us, um, you know, and, and someone that can do it and we get along with. Do you know anybody? <laughs> and, uh, and, and, and I'm so <coughs> stupid. So typical, Is this right? a I'm question? so dumb. I'm like, you know... <sighs> And I start recommending yeah. other camera guys. So he calls back again like a week later and says the same thing. And I'm like, did you talk to so-and-so? Nah, yeah, I mean. And he calls back a third time. Because Ryan doesn't say what what he wants. Yeah, like no, He doesn't never. just come out and say, hey, do you want to come on this hunt? And so I don't know. Like I'm just used to direct. Mm-hmm. Like So the third time he does it, I'm like, it dawns on me. <laughs> like my wife is... She knows me. Like, you know, women, they're going to be like dropping hints. Yeah. She knows she, my wife. I broke her of that years ago. If you want me to take you out, just tell me. Yeah. If you want me to buy you flowers, just tell me. Yeah. Like, I ain't a mind reader. <laughs> I'm so oblivious. So Ryan says to me, he's like, um, he says it. And I said, dude, are you asking me to go on this hunt? Is that what you're doing? Are is this you, a date? Are you inviting me <laughs> to go on the hunt and be the cameraman? 
And he's like, well, I mean, if you want to, I mean, I'm not asking if, if but if, but yeah, I mean, you could. <laughs> so I was like, dude, you want me to go? Yes, I will go. I, I'm, why don't you just ask? And he's like, I, I, I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> so, <laughs> so I'm like, well, I'm just, you know, I've just invited myself. I'll be there. And he's like, cool. So then we plan it out and talk about the gear and all that stuff. And then we hit it and we had an epic hunt. We killed uh, five bears between three guys. Insane. And they were some giants in the mix. It was one of the most magical hunts I'd ever been on. The success, the bears we saw, the ground we covered, the, the country we were in, it was just special. And that was the first videos that I made of Ryan and I. And then we did a tar hunt right on the heels of that and shared that in New Zealand. A very safe, responsible tar hunt <laughs> Dude, where that, you guys were adequately prepared and that weren't taking unnecessary <laughs> risks. <laughs> that was That is by far the dumbest <laughs> thing I have ever done. It looks sketchy. It was the dumbest thing. I, it was, we should not have done that. Yeah. Looking back, I'm like... That's a full crampon situation. That was dumb. <clears throat> That's a ropes and crampon yeah. situation. Yeah, yeah. Th- that was uh, dumb. Uh, but looking back, I'm glad it's over. But I can think back to that moment thinking, you know, this is what this is how people die. This is, yeah. this is how did, did it ever run through your head? You ever thought like, please, God, get me off this. Yes. And I will never do this again. Yes, yeah, absolutely. I, I would have thought I mean, that absolutely. a million times. <laughs> we had no pickaxe, no arresting equipment, no, no crampons, no ropes, no nothing. And the fall line was like 100 yards. Oh it was gosh. steep, icy. It shifted. It was avalanche. Everything was melting. And you fall 3,000 feet, you know, 1,000 feet, 2,000 feet. It was just like all to get this stupid tar that Ryan a shot. A 60-pound tar. <laughs> he did not want to leave that tar. And then I ended up being the one shimmying out more than <laughs> Ryan did. But uh, we, we, we got it out, and it was, a, it was a great story, and it was fun. But uh, that was a dumb hunt. Anyway, that's about the time I was getting the game bags and mm-hmm. we were doing the moose or the bears and we were boning them out and we were hanging them in the trees, these big orange bags, which no one had been using. And, uh, we were able to showcase them and test them. And what we loved about them is we are backpack hunters first, really remote. And most of the game bags on the market, especially early at that time, mm-hmm. <clears throat> dude, they weighed so much. They're they, just heavy. They were they, super they, heavy fabric, and the shape, they just, there's tons of extra fabric. Not only was it thicker, but it was just, it was unnecessarily large. And also, bulky. Yeah. They just took up so much room in your back. Mm-hmm. And, and then when you deboned it, okay, they didn't maintain a, a shape that's conducive to keeping the weight distributed in like yeah. a vertical yeah. manner and, in your bag. Yeah, and, like in most packs, you can fit two of those, two of the XL game bags side by side. 100 yes. pounds of meat, and you're perfect. But it, it, your typical game bag, you put it in there and all the meat without a bone on it, just mm-hmm. gunny sacks to the bottom. And then it all congregates in one spot in your pack. And you have to use your pack to, to cinch it down just right to kind of hold it in place. But when you use your game bags, the only other game bags on the market at the time I thought were doing a good job. And I can't remember their name. That's a lie, but I'm not going to say who they are because yours are better. Uh, they had a similar bag design. But they weighed a lot more, and they were way yeah. more bur- bulky. But they did give you the bone, the the deboned uh, sleeves like you had. So when I got yours, and they fit in the palm of my hand, they weigh virtually nothing, and and I could uh, put a whole bear in there, and I would bring a uh, an extra so I could stuff the bear hide mm-hmm. in there too, and we'd hang that up, keep the flies off of it. It was uh, it was awesome. I was waiting for them to fall apart, like just fall apart, and they did not. Although at that time, they were pretty easy to puncture. Mm-hmm. If I wasn't too careful, and they hit like a stob hanging off a tree or something as we were hanging it, pop, you get a little little hole in it. They were incredible. Like their tensile strength was like off the charts. Yeah, but their puncture strength wasn't so good. Yeah, yeah, and if it, it, that's the thing, if it's wet. That's one thing that that does not help that. Like if it's wet, the fabric will puncture easier. Like oh, okay. soaking wet, which I don't know if well, people it was know wet. that. But. Yeah, yeah. But it's a different fabric now. It's a yeah, little it's bit a little different. It's it's, it's a, it seems tighter because I have the old ones mm-hmm. and I can put them side by side. The color's different. It's not woven quite. These are tighter woven. It seems. Yeah, and these the, are these are like a micro grid ripstop. Yeah, and for some reason they do not 
they don't, I haven't noticed them having that same level of tenderness I had to use about not getting them punctured. Yeah, it's a little better, but I think that you're also more, I don't know, maybe you're more aware of it. Maybe you're not. I mean, could be, you know, yeah. if you, it, if you drag them through a creek or drag yeah. them across a log with stobs on it, they're going to tear. Yes. I mean, that's will. just, that's Here's just what thing, it is. That's the know, limitation. That but that's how it's so light. That just, I mean, if doesn't you want to carry happen. a burlap sack, then yeah. you carry it. Right. But what I love about those things is like, when we get our meat and we're putting it in, we're careful with it anyway. We're not mm. doing yeah. it, right? We're, And it's going from the animal to the pack. To we're, the cooler. We're not messing around with it very much. Now, we do hang it, um, you know, when we get to camp and get it cooled and stuff. But the hanging t- strength is incredible. Yeah. yeah, that's the other thing is um, we don't need to bring extra rope, especially yeah. when you're a gifted climber like I am. And I don't and know. You didn't you climb shimmy when we, up when we hung your anything. bear in that I dead could tree. climb that brick wall right there. When we um, hung your bear on that hunt, I was with, in that dead tree. You uh, remember that? Oh that, yeah, yeah. That was that I was didn't a see rock you climbing that. That was a rock over. Yeah, that that's because that's a death set. A little too wobbly. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but I'll tell you, you know, most of what we do, we just use the pull string that's already on the bag. Yeah, yeah. You've got it nice and long, and it's very strong it's reflective we can just shimmy up there boop, wrap it around tie it off and um man i love them i love these bags and then you bring them home wash them and you reuse them yes sir i got i got these orange things all over my <laughs> laundry room Dude, i have washed those bags and reused so yeah. many times and i never dreamed that i would have bought them for single use yeah for mm-hmm. a hunt i no doubt about it i've been surprised i've been shocked and how many times I've reused them, even with the holes in them. Yeah. yeah. Like, even when you get a small hole, it doesn't get any bigger. No. It kind of no. stays. And if you get a big hole, you can just tenacious tape it. Or That's what I, I was going to say. I'll just put s- some fabric or some something on the inside, or Suzanne will put a little patch right there on the inside. And then when I load it up, it presses mm-hmm. against it. And the only reason that I want the holes plugged is the flies. Yeah. yeah. Really. I just don't want them to crawl in there in the spring especially lay a bunch of eggs and stuff mm-hmm. like that and so it's it's really to keep those flies out um but honestly i just don't get holes in them anymore yeah just don't get holes in them i'm just more yeah i'm more careful i'm sure more experienced but lampers and i both uh they're a lot tougher yeah it's like well that's like mark said i mean if you want to if you want to have a canvas bag the same size it's going to weigh two, three pounds, like for the whole set. So it's just your style of hunting. If you want to carry a super, super durable, heavy game bag with you, well, exactly that. Go buy some 200D Cordura and use that. So on this moose hunt that we're going to show tonight in the theater, we we used your game bags. You sent us with some moose and prototype caribou and everything. And uh, you could fit um, a grown man inside like i don't know yeah, what you're the, thinking with your dimensions on one or two of those bags too big on the well it's 60 inches for a moose dude, leg you could, could reduce it a little two bit moose legs in one of those bags this is the early trip when we went to uh yeah. when we floated the river mm-hmm. the new ones were better this next time yeah i, I might i changed them maybe a little bit but yeah the the moose quarters are pretty big it's oh. like i think i made them they're 28 by 60 i believe so it's a big well you have to leave the bone in by law yeah. And uh it was it was legit though. The the new bags. Now, those were bone in. Yeah. We didn't get punctures. We drug those moose bags. Is it a different it's material? A, it's a twice as heavy. It's a 40 D okay. ripstop. Yeah. Yeah, it that was that was tough. We didn't have any issues yeah. uh with those bags ever. You you know, you feel a little more in your hand, but Yeah, and, and you know, I I tell people the ribs too, like if you're cutting the if you're if you're leaving big, you know, chopped ribs and and uh, yeah. big serrations on the bone and you throw that in a bag like if you have you're a lot screwed. of weight in there you can you're going to rip through yeah, almost anything no way. over those time. are like sharper than a jagged knife yeah they're extremely sharp so the uh thing with the moose bags i mean i i don't know i i wish you could come up with something a little better because uh can you just not i mean let me just tell you what happened a bear came up and tore one open i can you not make it a little tougher I can't. I'm can sorry, you, can Brian. I can't work? help that. Yeah, okay. You well, just got to shoot the bear next time. <laughs> Dude, that bear came and stole three, two of your game bags. Two two full quarters of your game bags. Well, who cares about the quarters, and man? I ripped them keep... open, and uh, then he buried it in a, a swamp. 
like a swampy Ooh. tundra, buried it. You know, Brian, that's why you're supposed to hang your meat high. There's no trees, dude. dude. Well, no, it was tundra. That's a problem, yeah. <laughs> I don't know what to tell you there. The other thing is there were a few trees, which we did leverage, but as we got closer to the lake, there there were no trees. The The plane was coming to pick up the meat. We got it on the beach, but that's when it got robbed. Um, now, we put it in the middle of a big meadow and then left some of our gear all around it, and so that bear would have to walk out in the wide open. like It was like... 300 yards to the middle like 300 yards of open and it's not gonna it's not gonna you know they, he, more can, hesitant, he can more he can hesitant. he can tell a trap <laughs> when he yeah. sees one you know so like grizzly bear we put it out in the middle we didn't want to do the meat eater meat tree fiasco where you <laughs> no. hang it up in a tree no. in a dense pile of alders <laughs> and then so eat lunch under it yeah and then he lunch because i want to be able to see all around that as I approach that meat, that there's nothing hidden 10 mm-hmm. feet from it. So uh, we we kept it purposely in wide open, uh, glassable, approachable spots to for safety. And we saw at least six to eight grizzly bears a day. Wow. On a, on a two-week, 16-day hunt. So pretty dense. Mots. So uh, one of the things that I noticed when we left Alaska, okay, we were, by the way, thriving because that's how we do when we're in the back country and we had our little teepee set up wood stove uh boots would get wet just because you're in alaska we, we, you know you're wearing rain pants and all that but every now and then you got your gaiters on and then you you just go in the water especially on the third trip on the pack out you know and it was pouring rain your boots get wet it's almost unavoidable on a moose hunt like that and uh boot dryers we just whip those suckers out, drop them in the boots. Um, they didn't. They didn't help much when we didn't have the wood stove because we went out on this spike tr- hunt. Brady and I separated from Ryan, went light as possible, went after this moose, and uh, we we actually had run out of food the day before, and it was like, well, it'll take a day and a half to go back and get food, or we just go on a prolonged fast and kill a moose and kill a moose. Good idea. It's so, like a king. And we're like, when we drop off of this, first of all, the day before I mostly starved because I, I realized the writing on the wall. So you start rationing. So I'm already like had like trying to stretch out two days worth of food into four or five days. Mm-hmm. So we each had one dinner, but the day before we had only eaten one breakfast. So Brady and I bomb off that hill and it is nasty and we get all the way down where we saw this moose the day before took us all day to get there we dodge a grizzly bear then we get there we set up we never find the moose so that night we ate our last dinner actually it was the night before we ate our last dinner it was the night before so that day we just starved the next morning we got up and tried to find that moose and thankfully we did and uh so we we are in a hurry to break it down and get that moose meat away from mm-hmm. the from the carcass. from the carcass as fast as we can, and get it. We're in a dense little bushy spot. I'm like, I want to get this meat all into a giant meadow where I can see 360 around me. So, and we're trying to beat the the darkness falling upon us, you know. And it takes a while to break down a moose and then pack it like you know, a quarter mile to a meadow and all that, the whole thing. But we did it just as the sun was going down. And then that night we ate, we ate moose. We ate moose uh, meat and, but two full days of no food, I think is what it was. We were prepared to go longer, but it wasn't the meat that was really good. It was the fat. It had Mm -hmm. layers of fat that were just in, and we were just shaving off like cubes of it, like butter cubes. Mm -hmm. And I was frying it. And then I was just, cooking eating all the ends once it like rendered all the way down and then we were boiling the meat in it i ate so much fat it just my body just craved it you know a lot of exertion i was already going hungry for a few days like light eating up to it and then two full days of not eating at all it was rough but we didn't because of that situation we didn't come down the mountain with a wood stove or anything so we got down there and there was no fire no you can't you can't have a fire actually in some of these areas um, unless it's contained in a stove. Mm-hmm. Anyway, it was pouring rain. 
It was miserable. And uh, our boots were soaked. And so the next day I packed out boots soaked. And we did have boot dryers, but it was just, it was like 30 degrees and raining. Yeah. If it's that cold and that the humidity is that it's high. It's just a fan. It's just, pu- it's just putting in cold, moist air. It won't do it. Won't it do won't it. do anything. So Brian showed up after all the work was done. Uh, and we already packed out pretty much the whole moose. <laughs> And he, and he brought us a wood stove and mm. more food from the main camp, which uh, was great because we were still at least a day and a half of hiking back. So it was it was nice to get some electrolytes and some some extras and to get the stove. But then you get that stove going, and I don't think I'll ever embark, even if it's just for a day, again without the stove and the teepee because that. This is what it's like for most guys who who don't bring a hot tent and then don't be, bring boot dryers. This, that's what we experienced for a few days there, plus starvation. And it sucks, man. Yeah. It sucks. Your motivation dies. Your strength goes away, you know. And um, But the boot dryers, right away, dried up all our gear, dried up our boots, Brady and I both. Next day, bone dry. We made our hike back up to the top. Our whole mood changed. Everything's done. The moose has been taken back to the, the 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 pilot came picked it up off the lake and i mean it was uh it was a pretty cool experience we get to the airport and we're getting ready to go home this is like a week later i'm in the airport every dude that has been on a moose hunt for the last 10 days is in that airport there's like there's still close, still wet <laughs> there's still wet there's like 30 of us in this airport that's all it is is just moose hunters and the airport is the size a little bit bigger than your booth yeah. okay it's like a tiny airport we're all sitting around, and, and most of these guys, almost all of them know who Ryan and I are. And so they're asking us questions and stuff. And they start talk, They start telling their stories and sharing their pictures, and it's really cool. We were at uh, another guy's house, uh, Mark Romo's house, uh, this guy, and he was there was a bunch of hunters over there. And he was showing us, these hunters were showing us their bulls and stuff, but they were describing how their hunts went. They didn't bring pack rafts. They didn't bring like a really good set of boots or gaiters that were great, that worked. They didn't bring boot dryers. And a lot of these guys were just wet. They Some of them brought propane heaters mm-hmm. and didn't dry out jack. And they had it inside a wall tent and they just cranked this propane thing. And they were wet the day. They got wet the first day and they stayed wet like 10, 12 days. They hated it. They're like, I don't think I'll ever do this again. And you contrast that with our experience where our boots are dry every day. We're running those fans in our wall tent. We had a base camp wall tent, and then we had our our uh, main uh, big big uh, other setup where we backpack in with the Peaks teepee and and a wood stove. But there were only two guys out of that group at the airport. Only two other guys that had the boot dryers. Two made a trip to Alaska, and almost every one of them is quite familiar with our content and how we do. And they were like. We watched your moose hunt last year. I, I like half of them were like, I saw it and I booked this. I'm like, did you not watch my gear dumps? Did you not watch <laughs> me talk about how to do this right? Like, yeah. it shocked me. And a lot of them were dropped. They just signed up with an outfitter. Yeah. Outfitter's like, I got your heater. I got your wood stove. I got your uh, your teepee, blah, blah, blah. These outfitters don't get wood. They, they just throw in a propane heater in a wall tent. And they're like, outfitted. Yeah, and these guys five thousand dollars. There you go. Yeah, and they have <laughs> no way to dry out their boots. There's no generator. There, there's no electric Pete's mm-hmm. boot dryer. There's no. There's nothing, man. And I was like, I was, I was appalled. I was appalled <laughs> that all these guys didn't have the boot. Because what do they cost? Uh, ninety bucks. Ninety bucks, dude. So I was gonna say one thing. I've started to do with mine is put them under my stove. Yes. Ah. And dude, just that little bit of air movement, it's crazy. I'll put them in the peak and have them just blow keep down them moving around. on the fan. Yeah. Yeah, so. I've messed around with something that, uh, yeah, I've messed around with. Because I mentioned that a, few, a couple years ago. Yeah. And you didn't think there would be enough uh, C- well, CFM. CFM. Yeah. Which the, is cubic feet. It's it's a volume. It's air volume. Cubic how feet much, per minute. Yeah. It's how, how much, much air is moving, moving a minute. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, there's actually a way. Uh, I've been messing around with another guy, but... um. You just take a real lightweight nylon, like the game bags are made out of. Yep. It has a few, like, uh, I don't even know what they're called. They're like uh, elastic, like the wire, like wire, um, flexible wire that you can, you can like cone out. Uh-huh. And uh, 
we've messed with making like a, a super light, like three ounce chimney, essentially. And you put the boot dryers in the top and it oh. pump, it actually works. It actually works really well. It's pushing the hot air down yeah, yeah, and it gets it's more directive. So by yeah. the time it, cause you don't need a lot of, uh, Fan it's it's just pressure if you're gonna siphon it. Yeah, and it's not it's not a man. You're it's, a smart guy. It's just taking 85 degree air and it just puts it where the air is 40 degrees by you. Right. It's where it's same thing. It, it, you don't need you don't need it to be moving air change in the entire tent every second. You just need tiny percentages of that air coming back down. It works pretty well. I haven't um I haven't released anything. I'm still far away from that. But it's a very simple product. I mean, dude, because I could see that because we i still throw it up there in uh, on the mesh in the peaks tb yeah. and i can still feel it circulating the air yeah. and getting a more even heat distributed through the shelter but if there was a, a funnel yeah. that pushed it all the way to the bottom yeah that would uh, then it indexes on a tp pole you know you just yeah, yeah. around the pole that seems like pretty genius yeah, but, I've 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 gotten to where I don't I don't go anywhere without because like learning. but you also have I mean to be fair though Brian your power consumption's out of control <laughs> like you're bringing in a car battery essentially so look not that they use that much but you're running a lot of stuff so actually I bring one dark energy battery pack okay and I bring the Rhino Tough uh, or the Anchor uh, three solar that's it and then I bring I've been using lately I've been using a Night Core battery pack that's about half the weight of that's the dark I'm, energy that's what i'm running to so i bring one of each i i don't trust the night core entirely mm-hmm. um not to stop working or not to like water issues or you know where my dark energies i've had for decade uh, you know almost a decade some of them and they're still cranking they're still doing incredible they, they just work so but they are a little heavier than some of the newer battery packs that have come out. So I've kind of split the difference. But yeah, I got two battery packs and a solar panel. Yeah, that's not bad then. That's it. Yeah, that's and that's not on a home like that. Otherwise, I'll bring one. That's not crazy. So it it's amazing how much battery uh, you're able to pull mm-hmm. if you just using a three three panel solar yeah replenishing it every day that's huge topping it off if you can well it's amazing how long those things run on the battery pack but this year yeah your graxaw boot dryers just sip that i don't even i'm not concerned about the juice they use Mm -hmm. it's 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 nominal it's negligent it doesn't matter Yeah. yeah some people have been like well don't you uh don't you want them to move, you know, move more air? They're like, I didn't move too much air. I'm like, no, because if you move too much air, you gain, you're going to either gain thickness, yep. you're going to gain diameter, or you're going to gain, and if you gain those, you're going to gain power consumption. Yeah. Like if this thing's hogging, you know, triple the power, right. like you're going to start noticing it. You're gonna be like, man, it ran for two hours and my battery pack dropped a bar and a half. Like you don't want that. Yeah. And if you run it in a hot tent with those fans, especially up toward the peak of the teepee, um, you're going to dry out those boots fast. Yeah. Now, if you're running full grain leather, I don't put them at the top of the teepee. Still too hot. It shrinks that leather too, too, too. It ruins your boots too quickly. Um, synthetic, like we lose, use the Laponia and all that. And you can just throw those up there. They're dry in 30, 40 minutes. Mm-hmm. If you're running a real full grain, like a wild rock or something like that, uh, I like to just sort of put them up on the tripod about halfway up the shelter, Mm -hmm. throw those dryers in. And then I, I still dry out the interior without like burning through the leather, Mm -hmm. but synthetic, I just throw them in the top and let it just, yeah, they can handle that. Yeah. But the boot dryers are, you know, I, by the time I left that airport, I impressed upon at least 25 guys, their need to have a pair of boot dryers to say to change their lives and a hot tent. So, I brought them up on the pic screen, you know, and then everybody took a photo because your your website is so forgettable. Uh, Grack saw. How do you spell it? He's What's brutal. it even mean? You know, that nonsense name. So, but Mark, once, Mark likes it. Mark thinks it like sounds it. good. It's like unique, it. Brian. Yeah. He calls his company tree line. <laughs> hey. <laughs> yeah, he does. <laughs> uh, my, my, but day. he's got the voice that's unforgettable. So yeah. there you go. Uh, I will say this: Once you have the name dialed, you don't forget it. Yeah, yeah. But man, that initial 
It, dude, it must it's be. Like I don't know, dude. It might be a, getter. It might be a Utah thing. It's like because I haven't. Getter. It might be a Utah thing or just a call people, thing. Because yeah. I, I've had tons of random people don't know what it is. They look, look at my shirt and say, "Graxaw." No. They, people, they get it. People are polite to you. That's what it is. <laughs> I'm, I'm honest. <laughs> okay. All right. <laughs> uh, so you got the boot dryers. Yeah. Um, like I said. I then I had a bunch of guys that we ch- exchanged info. Some of them were friends of my my, my buddies back in uh, the states and different s- different places. And they're like, I know you because I go to church with your buddy here and stuff like that. They all were like sending me photos, or they're they're like, I can't believe I lived without these. Um, everybody I know that has a pair of them is uh, like, these are these are genius. Should have had these a long time ago. And if you're a really sweaty foot guy. Like you, like me, they are, they are, cause we were just in Mexico mm-hmm. and I didn't bring them with me cause it's Mexico, but dude, I sweat so bad by like day four or five. My, my, my boots were pretty wet. All due, all due to simply my sweat. Yeah. And they got so wet that every time I put on a fresh pair of socks and was ready, to, like they were, they were. They were sort of, I was compromised from the moment we started hiking. <laughs> compromised. My feet were just <laughs> soaked. And so at that point, I, I Br- Brad brought his. And so I threw him in a couple of times and got him going and dried him out. And he was like, man, I just, there's really not a hunt. I, I want to leave them behind. Um, they're just, they're too, they're too handy to have. Um, elk hunting, even if it's pretty warm and it's not rainy early season, I'm still going to bring them just for the sweat. And, it's really important, I think, when you hunt, when it's below 30, it's November, we're in some mountain hunt, and you sweat every day, and you're in a, like, I'll wear a 1,600, what is it, is it 1,800, 800 gram wild rock. Yeah. Dang. Um, That's a lot of insulation. Yeah, it is. And uh, I'll wear those boots, and you're, inevitably, you're going to sweat. Yeah. But they're just so comfortable when you're glassing for three days for yeah. for for mule deer with the wind blowing in your face mm-hmm. and it's like twenty degrees or negative five or negative yeah. ten, which it's been in, on occasions. When it gets like that, it's just those boots are the way to go. But I well, as soon as we go after that animal, or as soon as I see one of my adrenaline spikes gushing, my yeah. feet gush and. Then those it's boot- a beautiful image, isn't it, Mark? Those, 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 <laughs> you should be in the same tent with those yeah. boots. Are so- yeah, what are the smells like? It in doesn't there, dude? come with just wetness. <laughs> well, think about it. When it's that cold, he's wh- toweling wh- himself off. Every- where, where does it go? Where does the sweat go? I don't know. It, it, there's nowhere for it to go, <laughs> and that's why uh, those boot dryers at that. Plus, your boots freeze overnight. Yeah, yeah, that's always fun. Frozen what, solid that was boots are great. To me, the yep. field deer this year. Oh man, hard as rocks. So this year, by the way, I I. I've been wearing crispy for a really long time. Um, and uh, my favorite boots by far, they have, you know, you can waterproof them or put a coating on them or whatever. And I have been using like the crispy brand stuff. I've tried a few other ones as well. And, uh, it doesn't last very long in my experience The you know, a few days on a hunt and the, 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 the moisture, uh, wicking oil, kind of mm-hmm. st- stops performing so well. So this last year, I just went to using bear grease, all bear grease on all my boots and heavy doses and just loading it up, loading it up, loading it up. My boots are performing a thousand times better. All the leather boots, a thousand times. Like bear grease has yeah. been, <clears throat> it's so it, it really becomes yeah. part of the leather in a way that, that yeah. the other stuff doesn't. Yeah, it probably still allows your leather pores to breathe, though. You know that's like, like that's the problem with beeswax, like uh, whatever that snow seal. Snow or, seal. That's the problem yeah. with snow seals because that that beeswax actually totally Fills blocks in the, the pores. So you're, yeah. that's why then your feet, yeah, they're waterproof, but then you're just getting your feet wet from your own sweat because yeah. your boots can't breathe at all. And, and I think it might go through and and clog the Gore Tex liner as yeah. well in some way. I I don't. I'm not sure. All I know is I experimented with it, and I'm in love with the bear grease. I mean, it's I, I'm putting it on the rifle as well. I'm putting it on everything, uh, and it there's it's a it's a it's better than anything I'm buying. Yeah, I so, do all lubricant. I know, and I I mean I I knew that, and I read about it. Daniel Boone. I heard uh, a lot of people talk about it, and 
you know, and I and I can recall like back in the day talking to Ryan and him doing that. But then you think modern tech has come, and they're like, no, you got to use this. And yeah. I'm in Italy at the Crispy Factory, and they're like, this is this, and this is why. And I don't remember. And so I, I'm like, okay, well, I'll take your word for it. You guys are the experts. They're wrong. Bear grease works better. <laughs> it just does. I wouldn't know, Brian. I'm still still have not killed a bear. Do it's you know, embarrassing. The problem with the bear so grease is hard to give it yeah. up, right? Yeah, it is. It's like gold for eating, and you got to put it on your boots. Yeah. But, man, There's I, no, nothing better to fry in than bear grease. Oh, man, it's amazing. It's the best fry it's incredible. oil by I've, far. I've eaten bear, but, again, haven't killed one, so mm. that's on the list. So you got the boot dryers. Mm-hmm. Folks, check those out if you haven't. You got the moose bone-in game bags. Do you have caribou? No, elk size works for caribou. I mean, yeah. you'll have a little okay. extra room, but yeah. elk. Uh, and you got the deer. The, I got the small the deer. Yeah, the small or medium elk deer bear size, which is like I call it the standard or ultralight, but it's like uh, it's just I don't know eight inches shorter, seven inches shorter than the the XL ones that get that everyone uses for elk, right? But I mean, it's just for real weight weenies. I mean, some guys like it because they just deer hunt, but you really, most guys get the XL size just because it works for deer too, you know? You yeah. just bring less bags. So, dude, and, I don't even know this or not, but we got a little gift bag last night from Austin. <laughs> yeah. He's got this new product. It's the dead, what do you? what is it called? DMT, dead meat tarp. Dead meat tarp. So, we you know we're always carrying these contractor yeah. bags, and you want to lay a tarp out to, to protect your meat. Yes. This thing is so much lighter than a contractor bag. Yeah. Is it really? It's 40 D sill nylon. And it could be wrapped and still protect your pack. Yes. So I'm going to run that all year. I'm going to get rid of the contractor bag stuff. That's versatile. And it's a tarp. Dead meat. So, so I you over. could get under it. So I. These, is, these corners are overdone. It's 200 D. It's yeah. overdone, but you will you will not tear this. And I made it like that so you could stake out. Like, if you had to leave your pack overnight somewhere, you could just stake this over your pack. If it's pouring on it's you. It's a legit you, tarp. Yeah, yeah, I mean. It's like a mini tarp. I, it's a mini tarp. Yeah. It's not. You don't want to sleep under it, but it'll keep we you do, dry enough. We do contractor bags for this very thing. And if they <laughs> they weigh more, actually. Yeah. But I like the way, the way that you can, you know, once you use a contractor bag, you it's, can't fold it back to the yeah. same size it is. Yeah. No. And it gets wet inside. And. You know, I was just talking in Peaks, the new sleeping bag, right, with the armholes. Guys, like, why would I want it? I said, because here's the main thing. I am not, I am trying to carry things. From now on, everything I carry, I wanted to do Can more than that? one thing. I wanted to do more than one thing. And here we go. You know, and the other thing about the contractor bag, hmm. it's never easy to lay the damn thing out to get your meat on it. Yeah. No, Can, it's not. And they, they blow in the wind so easy. like... I, I wouldn't even stake these. I would just tie, and I've thought about including string with it, but everybody has their own preference. But you just put your string on here and do a prusik or w- yeah, whatever yeah, knot yeah. you want. And then that's how I would use it. And then you just tie it to a tree, rock, whatever. You don't even need to stake it necessarily. You just tie it. But to even something. the way it just fold, lays out. It's do you better. think that could be a ground cloth you sleep on? Oh, shit. I don't know. It's, sure. it's, it's 36 by 60. Yeah, you could. It, it's pretty tough. I mean, it's a 40D coated nylon. It, it's, it's pretty tough. I mean, most tents, most tents, most tents, most tents are closer to that. You know how you're, you're huddling under the tarp, and you got your pack, and you, you don't want it wet, and you just throw it on your pack. Yeah, I love I, the idea. I, I made it because um, when I I pretty much just solo hunt elk, and um, when I'm not in grizz country, you know, just black bear country, I take my Tyvek ground cloth or whatever I'm using, whatever ground sheet I'm using, and I just bring, I roll it up every morning, and I stuff it in my bag. And I have a contractor bag too, but I, I would roll that up and I go, if I kill something, I take my ground cloth, unroll it, use that as my meat tarp essentially, and then h- bring it to a creek, cleaned up, whatever. If I'm hunting grizz country, I don't do that. I'm not wanting to sleep on something I just butchered an elk on. Yeah. That's why I made this. That yeah, was one of the yeah. main reasons. It is a good product. It's, it, yeah, you know, it's simple, this, but effective. I was thinking like, because I see it and I'm like, Tyvek, how does Tyvek compare to this? Pros, cons. It's lighter. Tyvek's lighter. Yeah, but it won't wash off as and easy. it won't get to no. that size. No, it 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 uh it'll wash off a little. It sounds like lightning. You know, yeah, you, you gotta you gotta, you gotta pre-break it, it in. Yeah, um, interesting. And then a lot of guys, you know, I don't know. I'm not saying every backpack hunter should carry it, shouldn't carry it. A lot of guys, though, if they're truck hunting, especially, are just spiking out like or come, you know, yeah, coming from a trailhead, like you 
bring it. It's it's five and a half, six ounces. So yep, yep. So yeah. before we talk about the skull hangers that I never talk about, yeah, but I should. Let's talk about your textiles. Okay, so yeah. <laughs> so see that buck over there, by the way. How come I haven't shot one like that in Missouri yet? Well, I have. <laughs> That's a nice whitey, isn't it? Yes. I need uh, Mark to, to- Is that one pull. of yours? That's my buddy's. Mm. I need Mark to deliver a little bit. We, a, I went on a whitetail hunt, but he really, he stuck me in a gar hole. And we then, were- uh, And then- uh, Yeah. He, we were, you guys, dad. dude, yeah. I'm not mad at Mark because he didn't know. I'm mad at you because <laughs> you knew. You were 10 miles from me, man. That's wild, huh? Bike by it a hundred times, man. That's I, my biggest that must question be, to you guys that is, must be like why a, are we seeing so many giant bucks if you guys hunt there? Why are you seeing? Well, I mean, because we're guys- terrible. <laughs> That's why. Because whitetail hunting, it's great for, you know, gaining weight, but it's not as fun <laughs> as out west. Not even close, man. Not uh, even close. That's funny. But we do love, we are going back, I think. Um, I, you know, it's been eight years since I've been back. Wow. And going back this time and kind of getting back in that tree stand thing, I was yeah. like, I'm going to dig it again. I, <laughs> and I, I was adamant I was never going to whitetail hunt again. I'd done it long Oh, enough. I'm addicted. Yeah. The whitetail, though, man, watching a whitetail buck and you know is going to come in from a long way away, dude, it's, it's, I'm panicking. It's, 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 it's difficult to deal with. Yeah. I yeah. don't know why it is. It's, to me, it is more than Western game, but uh, I think ambush hunting in general lends me to more nerves than stock than stalking in when i'm stalking in it's like i'm in predator mode i'm focused i have something to put my adrenaline and energy into i'm locked in i'm sneaky i'm there's all these things and i feel calm when i get in that moment i'm feeling like you're dead there's something about it that feels like i'm in control which calms me down when I'm sitting there ambush hunting and just praying that it gets close enough and I'm just like, I have no nothing to do but wait. I feel a little bit helpless and the adrenaline is just getting hotter and hotter and hotter and, and, and intense. Uh, yeah, I feel like I struggle to execute shots in those moments a lot more because like sneaking up on a mule deer or whitetail, a coos deer in Arizona, a lot of animals I've killed spot and stock, I rarely miss. A lot of animals I wait for in ambush. Mm-hmm. It's like, whoa, you yeah. know, you get back. Don't it's win like, me. Don't win me. Yeah. Don't look up. For Don't win me. For some reason, uh, it can a lot of times be more nerve wracking, in my opinion. Yeah. 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 More nerve wracking for sure. But thankfully, I'm uh, about 50 years old, lots of life experience, and now I'm ice in the veins. Ask Mark. <laughs> I mean, I sluiced at these three deer. <laughs> No problem. Yeah, he did. He did. They actually died right next to each other. Yeah, that's, <laughs> pretty, that's pretty awesome. <laughs> like, the, I shot this buck, and it bounced up there. It went like, boom, boom, boom. Stood there and p- fell over. And I hit him with that that 525-grain arrow with the uh, that mechanical. The Valkyrie, The right? Valkyrie yeah. mechanical. Yeah, that'll 200 do grain the head. That'll do and, the trick on a white tail. And when I shot him, I, I was impressed with that. Freaking. When I shot him, it went through like his hip all the way through and up through his neck and out his out his neck. So my it, gosh, it, through his whole body. Wow! And Ste- it was like doot, steep, doot, doot. steep quartering away, huh? And then he just stood there, yeah. And then he just so we were in. A, he was in a tree set. It was above even where he was at. You know, like the buck was down a little bit of a drainage, and we were up on the side of the hill uh, a little bit. Hill. So it was a uh, it was a pretty good draw, and we were. He likes to get thirty feet in the tree. <laughs> They're not blacktail, man. All, All right? right, I like to be high. So high, high, high. Between the thirty feet and the extra ten feet, it yeah. was a it was a good serious h- angle. Well, man, the, when the wind's blowing too up there, was it giving oh, you a dude, little bit of that? I, I like it. Oh my gosh, I, I like hate it. that feeling, man. Uh, I like heights. I lived in a treehouse and it moved all the time. Oh my gosh, dude! dude he put no up. We way. put up a tree stand, <laughs> a fixed stand. There's no way I'm going up there. I'm like, I am not <laughs> going up there. Yeah. I mean, how to get out the man lift to put the thing up? We ended up only hunting it one night, and uh, I loved it. Oh, I, um, I was like stressed the whole time. I like to be on the on the moon, uh, but that was just such a fun hunt. Uh, but yeah, you're from you're from that part of the country, from middle of Missouri, yes, sir. Yeah, it was it was a fun hunt. I'm excited to go back. Uh, you do have these new skull hangers, mm-hmm. uh, and they're genius. Why didn't somebody else come up with them? And uh, how come people, uh, how are they selling? 
Uh, they're selling pretty well. Like once people have started to find out about them, um, yeah, somebody should talk about them. Somebody should. Somebody should talk so, about. Yeah, them more. <laughs> I mean, the deer one's very simple. Like it's so simple. That's the new packaging, but it's just there's a million deer hangers out Check there out. that are just a problem. I, have them. I got several. Yeah, I got several bucks hanging on a, on my. I do too. I just don't give him any. Yeah, uh, Mark's a very publicity. responsive, <laughs> communita- communicative, you know, he just, he really gets with the hey, program, Brian. I make life easy for everybody, yeah. right? Like, I'm not too picky. Yeah. Uh, no, I, I I need to make a more concerted effort to uh, to mention. I, it was a clear indictment upon my lack of support for Graxaw when I was in that airport. And nobody had the boot dryers. <laughs> yeah. I was like, what? You and you guys are big that. fans and you fall. Clearly, I am not. They just don't trust I am, your, I guess they just don't trust your, your don't rec- recommendations, me. man. Or he says too many, so many words they missed. <laughs> like, what was he talking about yeah, now? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I need I need to work on it. Clearly, there's a lot of people who, who uh, a lot of people said, I saw it and I meant to buy it. And they never, and they never did. Yeah. But uh, yeah, that's a, that's a huge one. These are another one. Um, we yeah. we love the ones from Jim Nakarado. Mm-hmm. He he sells like you see Ryan with the state yeah. custom state one and all that where he hangs. Some of them I like, some of them I don't because if the state isn't if the shaped, state's a square, it looks like yeah. A square. I just don't care. Colorado, yeah. Like a steel plate. I think Mexico looks sweet, but I like Alaska. Then I'm like Arizona. Well, and there's a well, place th- th- to do that's a little thing. higher profile, I, I, right? I, yeah. yeah, it's like that's very artistic and awesome. I'm not trying to compete with that. That's beautiful, and you know, but that's, it's a work so of art. That's this is just simple, clean, and elegant. Yeah, yeah, and it, and it works not just for deer. It works for bear, cougar, uh, mm-hmm. antelope, whatever. There's been people in Europe. I've been selling on. Um, I don't know people in Scotland and the UK and stuff that have put I don't know weird yeah. weird deer, whatever kind of deer they have on there. Talk a little bit about these, um, because a lot of times when you have these hooks like this, a guy will sell them. They're just a hook, mm-hmm. and you can see it for one pretty easily. Like sometimes the the, the whole plate is too mm-hmm. visible, which I don't like. I like it a lot cleaner like this. But also, they tilt left or right because right. they don't come up with this little design you've got. Yeah, it's really simple. It's just. Almost all the the deer skull hangers, like there's a million cheap ones on Etsy, eBay, Amazon, whatever. Yeah. All it is is just a piece of stamped metal that's bent. That's all they are. They're yeah. super thin and cheap. But the problem is, one, they're super flimsy. And you, I mean, if you have a heavy head, it can just bend down, yeah, right. one. And two, if you have anything, again, substantial rack or a bent rack, busted, whatever, uh, they'll just rotate to one side and you can't fix it. So I just made... The main prong, I upsized everything, made everything super thick, uh, as thick as I could get away with. The main middle prong as long as I could and still index into all deer. And then I added these two little claws, these two prongs on the side. They go right under the spinal cord entry of the skull. Yeah. And it fits any deer. It doesn't, yep. I mean, it doesn't matter. You just, well, you, just, you just tweak them a little. Yeah, if it, you just adjust them. You just, right. you just push the skull down and you can bend those little arms down. It's so genius because as soon as you put it on, you can angle it any way you want and left and right. You don't ever have to worry about it falling no. sideways. And I've been known to shoot a couple of one horned animals mm-hmm. because, or little, or little. Yeah. cause you know, a big spikes look good on them. We got big three sixty. <laughs> really exaggerates a big three sixty. <laughs> yeah, yeah, dude, that, that's really the that, selling that point. is the forty five degree angle it's at. You know, it's real. Looks really clean <laughs> on those spikes. Look when it's when it's when it's a big three fifty bull that broke off an antler. I'm gonna shoot it. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I'd rather have that than the than the 300 bull with two with two beams. And so I got one in my house actually that my cousin shot years ago. It was one of our his first uh, archery trips and it's a giant bull and it's one horn on one side mm-hmm. is broken off after after the royals. And so on the other side, I fought with the hanger for that because you put it on there and it just it just mm-hmm. the weight was so lopsided um and that's when you really notice when you're looking at your wall and like every antler is slightly cockeyed mm-hmm. left or right you're like you're taking wire and you're trying to like wire it over and keep it from like falling mm-hmm. yeah you solve that yeah so yeah that's the deer deer and smaller species and then i got the elk one that's adjustable so it's uh how much are these those are 
15 bucks on the site. Nice. It's crazy good. Pretty, pretty, uh, yeah. I recommend you guys get like, when you do it, get like three, keep them. That way you're ready to go. Yeah, they come in three packs too. And I, th- I think oh, the three good. packs are discounted a little bit. Oh, how, do, how do you like the bear, the look of it with the bear school? It looks good if you, lots of people don't put bear on the wall, you know? Yeah. Lots of people just put it on a pedestal or a right. desk or whatever. But if you got a bunch of them, you need spots for them. I think it looks great. Yeah, I'm drowning in bear skulls. <laughs> I really am. And it's like, I mean, I kind of have, I actually, have the pedestal stand that that comes up and has mm-hmm. it's up pretty high, and I ended up uh, gluing the mouths open, all the jaws open, because I like that open look. And then uh, I just stick them on those pedestals, and then they're all in a line, and they're just like jaw after jaw yeah, open. And that stuff. looks cool. It's super. That cool. looks cool. Yeah. 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 Mm-hmm. The uh, the elk one, it's adjustable. Um, I made it so the teeth don't hit the wall, the back of the the brain stem doesn't hit the wall and you can get rear tines like on smaller bulls. That's a smaller bull over there. Like whatever that is, a 240, mm-hmm. 250. You can t- kick the tines back close to the wall rather than most smaller bulls. Yeah. They look like they're upside down in the room on the floor. Cause when they're on yeah. the flat wall, it's like they just don't look good. Right. So that fixes that. You kick this, you kick the adjustable plate out and, uh, it works, and we've had. I think the biggest bull's like a four eighteen. Someone's put on it. Yeah. We've got pictures of a three ninety six. So there's. And how much it, are the elk ones? The elk like ones this? are fifty. Yeah, and you That's, know, it's yeah. a it's a pa- it's literally one pound of steel. I made them fifteen point nine nine pounds ship, so I can ship them first class. Dude, this is legit. So that legit. Is, I just got that. I'm. So I got my New Mexico bull that I boiled instead yep. of mounted. I'm gonna put him with that because right yeah. now I just got it sitting around. Yep. Yeah, and it doesn't. It Isn't doesn't. Go- that some. That's kind of a one horned freak. No, that was this year. Oh, okay. Yeah, that that one this year. I had that dog. one. I did decide to have that one mounted, full mount. I think it's, it's pretty cool. It's still the big neat. sword. Yeah, yeah it's, it's pretty cr- cool. You know, you may not get another one like that. That's a badass bull. And he's gonna look good on. That I was one. like, that yeah. thing must have had a death wish if Mark <laughs> killed him. <laughs> <laughs> Archery. I love it. Oh, uh, I got such good friends. Don't he I? does. Yeah, they're great. We're here for you, man. We're here. <laughs> they really respect you. Hey, remember, you. so he's hey. hunting with me with moose, and he's already on me like, All right, how's the fitness coming? How's this going? How's that going? Look, I can't afford to have a dead weight. Dude, he's been oh, there, man. done that. Up here, iron, dude. <laughs> you can't deny it. He's been there, done it. I know. I know. But age has a way. <laughs> no, I don't know. <laughs> no, we're going uh, tonight in the theater. We're going to showcase yeah. the movie with Brady and... And Lampers and I, and you're going to see, Mark, how serious this hunt is. And <laughs> all I saw you guys <laughs> you walking better, across some open oh, tundra with, with Lampers, hair, locks blowing in the wind. That's I all I saw in the trailer. Someday, someday I'll be able to have someone film me and yeah. make me look. And so that's the like thing. I'm the only. River d- runs through it. Dude, I know? don't know, man. <laughs> that hair flows nice. I'm the only dude on our posse <clears throat> that films him besides Brad. And this is the this is what I get. I filmed his whitetail hunt. I appreciate that. I got his mule deer way better than he got he mine. Did. Um Ryan and I had a heart to heart in Mexico and he said, You're right. I need to do better in film. Wow. I need to touch the camera. He and actually then, said that. Yeah, and then he filmed the whole the whole like next five days. Wow. And he downloaded a bunch of software, and he ran his phone, and he had a 360 camera, and he captured his own Holy kill shot. Wow. And then he recorded all this instant. I'm like, who are you? <laughs> yeah, you've changed. <laughs> what the hell? Wow. Um, no argument whatsoever. Yeah. You're right. I'll do better. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. What the hell? So uh, I think he could sense Mark Livesey was- I was coming on strong. Yeah, he's coming on strong. He's about doing, to take the some, role over. Yeah. No, it's. Uh, I mean, I'm already killing bigger mule deer than him, and he's. More, I mean, <laughs> the, I'll be serious. And uh, <laughs> oh, he can't stand it. He, he can't stand it right now. Yeah, he'll probably kill like a 250 next year. I, are you in the 200 club? You've killed a 200. No, no, okay. not mule deer. No, no, Mark's got two two giants in a row. Uh, yeah, two years in a row, I've had wow. I've had good luck. And Lampers didn't. One with Brian. Lampers got skunked Heck, yeah. two years, in one state, not the best in the other, but he'll. He'll oh, find his know, mojo. You know That's what who he is. You know what exactly uh, what will Oh, happen. yeah. You know what's going to happen. It's he, a matter of time. <laughs> instead, he, he just made up for it with like a record coos and a giant yeah, exactly. archery bull elk. You know, Fourth largest coup probably ever killed or something. <laughs> it's something knows. crazy like that. That's crazy. Yeah, it's. I'm going to enjoy. I enjoy. I got, I've got to take my time in the light while 
I have because it. <laughs> it's gonna be. It'll be stripped quickly. Short, <laughs> short lived. <laughs> it's right. We already there's already a lot of moose chat. I'm like, I'm oh, gonna. Oh, when you kill a giant uh, mule deer a couple years, great mule deer two years in a row, and Ryan didn't. You have to rub it in and rub it in and rub it in. That's the rule. I'm not letting up. Yeah, I'm not that's the up. rule. Pedal on the gas. Yeah, it's beating. Yeah. It's beating someone who's better than you. You beat him like. You uh, milk it. You, yeah, like you, you yeah. play somebody in pool and you beat them in pool and they're better than you. Don't ever play them again. No, no. you just played them once. That's you it. beat them. We're that's done. It. Yeah. No, I mean, um, that's 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 uh, I look. You can hear it on the video, by the way. Like the crap we give each other, like oh, yeah, with Brady and I, it's endless. Like some people say, I'm mean. I just I refute that. Like I, I disagree with that. Like I, I'm not mean. It's just a good ribbing. I think that this is like I want you. If if I miss an animal, I I want you to rub it in. I do. I want to be shamed. <laughs> that starts a fire in me. Like pisses me off. Uh, and I get better. Uh, if you were just like everybody misses, it's fine. Yeah, I don't think you're helping me that much. Hang tough, Brian. Yeah, hang yeah, tough. You, when I miss <laughs> that bear, when I miss that yeah. bear from the camp, I mean. Disowned? It a, and it was a freaking shot, right? It was a shot. And he didn't even let, it was within, what, what are you doing? How did, how did you miss that bear? <laughs> you're gone. I'm like, because you, <laughs> you were supposed to dial my scope and you didn't dial it. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, yeah, that's the gamesmanship, purposefully not dialing the scope. Wow, he Brian. He stresses me out. Like, I've missed two bears with him. Hey, I don't, Dude, I don't he's do. just right over the shoulder. I'm in just, I, don't I got miss the camera going. Things. I'm like, don't miss. I got the camera going. Did you see that video I did with Pedro? Probably not. But Pedro just published that Alberta oh, the one we, mule deer hunt <laughs> that we did together. I've seen it. All I do, he missed. <laughs> he missed a bucket 30 yards. Like, full draw. Just missed. So, yeah, for the next three days, I made fun of him. <laughs> and yeah. he was like, he has this part in the movie where he's like, why why does Brian why is he so mean? <laughs> why and it's like great Pedro. Yeah, you you do owe him for the air pad stuff though. I do, I mean, right? You, owe him, you should that's a right? few years of getting back at him yeah, probably. Yeah. No, I think uh I think I know for me competition drives me like big time. So does you know somebody you know you, know, you become like the people you're around the that's most. Right. That's if exactly I was the right. best hunter in our group would I become better? You know what I mean? Like yeah, it's you, you, you dominate you, everybody you, around you. But when you're with somebody who's exceptional in a lot of ways, you're just like, man. Yeah. You don't want to be the best in the group. You don't want to be the worst. Those yeah. are the two spots. It's hardest to improve. <laughs> right. At least that's like in jujitsu. Like you're the worst person in the gym. Yeah. You're never going to improve. You're just getting smashed. Yeah. And if you're the best person, you're just, well, yeah, you're, you're not learning of, much. Yeah. Yeah. I think it's true. I think, I think that uh, like, with Graxaw, you come up with this business. Um, what 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 drives you? Do you do you are you driven by the business side, like a desire to succeed or prove anybody wrong, or to, or is it just purely like I enjoy building things, or is it a combination? Like, what- I don't know. I think it's a it's a combination. And I mean, at first it was I didn't think. I was going to sell anything, really. I mean, I... Well, that's how it felt. Yeah. Like, <laughs> here's some game bags. If you could sell a bunch for me, great. Yeah. That's pretty much what I'm I was. I'm like, where's your website? I, what website? Hey, the website's pretty clean right now. It's a lot cleaner Dude, than it was. For it's like a year, clean. there was like no website. Um, yeah, like, you had to like, uh, write in a mail order. Yeah, that's right. Or you had to like fax in an order, you know, but it was working. So, yeah. no, uh, I mean, now it is a little more... I. um. I feel like I'm bad at business as far as I give stuff you away keep all the saying time. That. I mean, I give stuff away. I have another business back home, but I give stuff away and I like I don't know, I'm not ruthless. I don't yeah. think I'm a ruthless person. He's like, not yeah. either. I'm ruthless when it comes to hunting or grappling or something. I'm not ruthless with other people. I love people. I, I love being around people, talking to people. Yeah. So like I feel like maybe that holds me back, maybe it doesn't, I don't know. But uh now I definitely I love it. I love the design and building new things that don't like some of the stuff obviously exists. The meat tarps and game bags and stuff that exists. But I'm I'm, I really enjoy, I have a lot of things I'm going to make and I'm in the process of making that they're not out there and I, I enjoy it. I enjoy figuring it out. And uh, yeah, I do want to be, you know, I am driven by, uh, you know, coming here, like seeing these companies, like there's some amazing, amazing stories here. Like Peaks, I mean, Peaks is absolutely incredible from 2016 or whenever yeah. they started. Like it's absolutely crazy how many guys are working there, how awesome the products are. It's like, 
yeah, I, that drives me. Like yeah. I want to be, I want to up my level in this world and and get to something like that because it's it's a very it's 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 powerful. It's awesome. We, we talked about that the other night because we got a, the, you were at the party, yeah, the Peaks party last yeah, night. The party. Yeah, that, it was a party, yeah. <laughs> it's like a we frat had, party over. I was there. like, <laughs> we had the Mormons on one side of the room, and then we had that whoa on the other side <laughs> yeah. of the room last night. Uh, Brian's like, yeah, come over. We'll just eat a light dinner and then we'll podcast. And I'm like, dude, there's no way we're podcasting. There's 35 people here. I missed the memo yeah. about the party. I showed up at the house. I'm like, I'm not going to name wow. company names, but <laughs> there was a wild side of that room yeah. and there was a not. Uh, but it was cool, uh, you know, just a group of people that get together and hang out. But, um, there is something fun. We, but we did discuss, you know, what if, what if someone wanted to come in and buy up peaks, mm-hmm. you know, I don't know. There's things about it that are so rewarding. Money can't buy the brotherhood that, that we all kind of have over there. The group of us that are involved on the, on the board and the ideas and Ryan and I, do tons of testing and now mark too. not that his inputs that useful but <laughs> oh my we, gosh we, dude. we all like are part of this great team and it's it is it is just um it is so rewarding and to yeah. see it grow and i think it's just that sort of um that that is an inspiring thing to be part of and i couldn't guess by the way what brands would do that and which ones wouldn't. I mean, I look at Graxon and I'm like, from where you are today to where you started from, you were half ass doing this thing. Yeah. And now I was juggling you have a lot like of things. a business. Yeah. Yeah. I it, mean, it's really neat yeah, to I'm, see. You are really talented I'm on the right design that. and and engineer kind of stuff. You find problems you identify problems and then you, you develop solutions and the solutions are genuine. Um, which is, that's why I think peaks has been successful. Mm-hmm. You know, the sleeping bag. I'm like, I, w- I would never thought of that. That's a, that's, that is, I'm was, I texted Bryce when they released it. I, I didn't know anything about it until they yeah. released it. You know? And I was like, dang, man, that's a, that's a great idea to build a yeah. pull your arms out is a well, great the thing idea is about even you two. I mean, the level of, freaking testing that they goes through it with mm-hmm. their stuff when you live in a sleeping bag that long that much i think that those things come to you mm-hmm. just like you you have some products i hope launches soon but you're like this is a problem and then it's a big problem you came up with a solution that i'd never heard of why didn't i know this why don't others know this why don't other like i don't want to drop too many hints but other like People in that realm, in that industry, know how to process like they don't. I don't know. I mean, I I think it takes doing it. I mean, like like you're saying with the sleeping bag, spending time in the sleeping bag, spending time yeah. doing something. Like you see, you you spend a lot of time doing something. You see the problems. I bought a ton. I mean, a ton of deer and elk hangers, and I prototyped a ton, like hundreds. Yeah, and I'm like. You know, they're, I don't know. I don't know why nobody thought to put it behind the eye bones. I don't know. But see, just, that's the it, thing. Just, that's just like, be, you took, you spent money, and you, but a lot of guys would be like, I'm going to make a hanger. I'm just going to design something. I'm going to do it. Is it the best? Maybe not. But when you look at a hundred products and break them down in your level of engineering expertise, it just becomes obvious what you need to do. Yeah. Right. And like, then when it comes out, the shit just, it works. Like when we work over here, Ryan and I, we'll, we'll come up with problems and then we will come up with what we think are the solutions even. And then we'll run them by Jason and Bryce and, and Bryce doesn't get enough credit for this. The, he's the owner of Peaks, the, the president. Um, they will, they will kind of, they'll kind of go, Oh, great, great idea, Ryan. Great idea, Brian. Great idea. Stick to filming. Stick to <laughs> stick to testing and telling us what's wrong with it. We'll fix it. Yeah. And uh, and sure enough, they come up with a, a way to, we're like, this is a way you should fix it. And then they come back with a way that they fix it that is a thousand times cooler and better than the yeah. way we thought yeah, about no it. Doubt. Like that tarp, the folding. Yeah. Jeez, we can identify, genius. we can identify what we don't like about it and where it's not performing, but then how to fix that problem. When you get a guy that's really innovative and creative and has 
has a, a mind for that. He's just so much. Their 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 idea to solve our problem is ten x better than our idea to solve mm-hmm. it. But they wouldn't know that there's an issue or what to solve if we weren't living in that teepee twenty four seven. Um, you know, a lot of the the conventional ideas around backcountry or just just teepees in general is, you know, you need a Hilleberg or some freestanding tent to withstand uh, the the hurricane when it comes. You can't do that in a teepee. Teepees aren't built that way. It's like, no, that's a very efficient shape for the wind. A teepee is a very efficient shape. But but before, but the zipper was not in every yeah. other version. Zippers mm-hmm. won't hold. The zippers, the poles, the guy outs. They didn't have the the internal structure with the mm-hmm. the cross members with the poles. They didn't have the stiffness. And most of those teepees would just kind of cave or pick up in the wind and take off like a kite. You know, we're like, we want a teepee that can withstand the 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 hurricane Mm -hmm. and then and we got it and yeah the only limiting factor for your peaks teepee is is not the fabric or the construction of the teepee it's can you hold your stakes in the ground and is your rocks on your if you need to if are your rocks on your stakes heavy enough and if you can do that then and like you're impervious with with that team i'm not you know the ability to to adjust it closer to the ground Mm -hmm. versus a lot of other teepees that have a loop no adjustment Mm -hmm. it just stakes down you get what you get Mm -hmm. But the ability to raise the height to allow more airflow or to suck it down and not allow airflow for me is a key I- mm-hmm. issue yeah. with a TB. But the number one problem with TBs is the full zip zipper. Mm-hmm. I own multiple. My wife thinks I have a problem with tents. <laughs> I have multiple TBs with full length zippers, and I have not one. I have not a single TB that I have not replaced the zipper. Yeah, they get that sand and dirt. In they, them and well, I know they pull, pull. apart. In the wind, like we hunt a lot of windy places, like credible, credible windy places, and it eventually it just will separate that zipper, and then you're freaking hosed. Yeah, then you're hosed. Especially and you're getting ba- the wind you're baby coming, in it. You know, you're baby in it. And um, yeah, I had a hunt one time. I had on a folding zipper. I had to take a piece of paracord and punch holes <laughs> down the side <laughs> yeah. to sew Th- it up. Yeah, through some reinforced spots. Yeah, to sew it up. That design or the zippers, the actual sidewall. Especially if you use Dyneema, it doesn't stretch like mm-hmm. sill. And you have all that tension solely on the zipper and you stake it down taut. And then, <clears throat> you know, you're running it. And then when you close it, it just, you're putting all that tension back into that zipper. Mm-hmm. It's cold. And when that zipper fails, you just got a willowing mm-hmm. window. Oh, you got it. And, and like Mark said, you got to then like, punch holes, stitch it shut, Mm -hmm. whatever. Otherwise, you have no shelter Mm -hmm. for like 10 degrees. That happened to Ryan and I multiple times. Nothing made me more angry than a zipper that failed. Now, Ryan said it always failed when I used it. (laughs) And it did. That just means there's something wrong with the design. Uh, Ryan's just, uh, he got lucky. (laughs) Um, You know, but I want to say one more thing about the way you do things too. Is like, we were talking last night, you were saying you give away too much stuff, you do this, you know that. But I think that what you get from that is you get this feedback from these guys that are out there doing it. Not that you, you know, you're also using it as well, but it's, I think it's the right approach. I mean, I told you last night, I mean, you can market, 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 you can do all the things you want to do, but when, when people that are doing it at a high level for – it's not like even a high level. It's the number of bats. I was talking to a dude yesterday. It was coming. Man, I want to be I want to be more like Lampers. I want to – I said, dude, you got to understand something. He hunts 100 days a year. Yeah. You just told me you hunt 10. You'll never do it. So in 10 yeah. years, he has 100 years of experience to year 10. There's no way to catch up. But what you can do is educate yourself. You can become better other ways. But you can't catch up unless you can – let you have that time and i think that what you're doing with your products and getting them in the hands of people that are doing stuff at a freaking level you're getting your products are getting better and better and better because of that in my opinion yeah and i uh i was blown away i've had some people stop in that i know of you know in the industry and stuff and stop by and say hey i use this or i use that and i was like wow i was I was blown away. Not that you guys aren't cool, <laughs> but there are some other cool guys, you know, and just even hardcore hunters, like some hardcore guides and stuff. Like, um, there are some, uh, 10th group SF guys that use my boot dryers. Like, that's cool, man. Yeah. There were some smoke jumpers that stopped by. They're like, dude, dude, I was giving these. He said, we had two pairs and we we're giving these between 20 guys on a fire. We were running. And I'm like, 
that is cool. Yeah. That's really cool. No, it's one of those products like the Peaks Gators. <clears throat> we brought Ryan and I ran for a couple of years and Bryce, it kills Bryce because we're like, not ready, not ready, not prime time. We, we, we've done this. We've done that. Not ready, not ready. Kills the person who runs a company who wants to launch a product mm-hmm. for it to be not there yet. And especially as it takes time, because it takes time to genuinely test something. Then we launch it and people are like, there's a million gators out there. I have a pair I particularly like, kind of found my, you know, it takes a long time for the word to get out on how good the peak skaters are. Mm-hmm. But you jump ahead three, four years. People know. Yeah. The it's, reputation. Got you don't out. have to. You don't have to advertise. It's just word of mouth and like, oh, those are awesome. And all of a sudden it's like the sleeper product that just starts to boop, 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 mm-hmm. in sales. I see that with your boot dryers. Right. Right. It's got this slow growth over mm-hmm. time, but now you got special force dudes, you got fire jumpers, you got hunt- like anybody who goes out in the back country and spends some time hiking is going to mainstream. Mm-hmm. And I always wondered, you know, why I, when I first mentioned it on the podcast, why haven't, hasn't this been invented for backpacking? And I'm like, am I the only one with sweaty feet? Am I the only one that gets wet boots? Like, I don't understand this. But I think it goes back to, for that, people felt like they needed a heating element. Yeah, they felt like they needed a heating element. And also, the batter, portable battery technology 10 years ago wasn't True. here. Even five years ago, the performance was garbage compared yeah. to what it is. Well, five years ago, was about five, six years ago, was a break point. And then it started getting like, now you can reliably yeah. bring portable energy into the backcountry. I was talking to a friend yesterday who's a big-time backcountry guy. And... uh he, he's like, how many battery packs did you take with you to Alaska? And I'm like, I, I brought like two. He's like, no way. No way. You were there like 16 days. I'm like, well, how many did you bring? I was just curious. He's like, I brought like nine fully charged. Wow. Cause he's like, I, I use so much per day and I know what that number is. And I said, have you checked out a three, three panel solar panel? He's like, solar's, I just, it doesn't work. I'm like, well, in the last two years, maybe two and a half years that tech jumped it mm-hmm. jumped and then jumping now with the mm-hmm. flexible ones the yes. rollout ones now now i'm like i'm hearing every week about the performance of solar panels that is just crushing what we it better used let to him be. sell some stuff uh, yes. no my my little brother's supposed to, i don't know where he's at but i was gonna say like it's jumped and now that it's jumped it's legit um look at they get yeah. they, okay we're wrapping up this podcast <laughs> oh no we got a lot more we got a lot more you got here you just take that <laughs> i'm serious just take it all right uh so nope it's great dude so where can people find grack saw www.gracksaw.com g-r-a-k-k-s-a-w.com it's not a mouthful it's easy to say everybody knows how to pronounce it and it's a cool name Brian. You know, here's the thing. I'm a lot more what, original than gritty you know? Yeah, it, you know i like it because you remember it. Yeah. Yeah. It's like, it's rememberable. Yeah. Um, I like it. I like it. It's, yep. I mean, it's not as good as tree line, but you know, yeah. it's close. It, it's up there. <laughs> I love yeah. it. That's where you can find us. I got an Instagram too, but I don't, you know, I don't really do much on there. All right, man. That's it. We're going to roll guys. out. Appreciate okay. you, man. Thank you guys. Love having these Thanks conversations. Awesome. It's cool to be friends, partners on all this stuff. It's fun. Thanks, Mark. Folks. Thanks for tuning in and uh, we'll catch you on the next episode. Stay gritty.